Podcast. You're listening to the Barn Church Podcast. Part two of our series, What is the Gospel, commenced this past Sunday. And I'll tell you, our in-house prophetic voice, Pastor Michael Swan, spared no punches. Guys, the enemy is a liar. The devil wants you to forget to whom you belong, to whom you should serve. If he had his way, he'd have you working in circles, forgetting who you really are in Christ. And for a lot of us, that's exactly what happens. We need to remember what the gospel is because he's the way, the truth, and the life. You can count on it. Stay tuned because the TVC Sermon Podcast starts right now. Well, welcome once again to the Barn Church Podcast. I'm one side of the office Man, recording studio. That's what I'm talking about. I love this sound. <laughs> <laughs> and I have Pastor Michael Swan on the Hi other side, grooving, dancing, yeah, having fun. I am. So, a little chair dancing yeah. over here. <laughs> you get to hear what I get to you hear. You do so that in good. the car, right? You guys, you guys all listening out there, you do that in the car, right? You get that good praise <laughs> music going. You bop into it, you know, pull up to the red light, look to your right, see something, then suddenly slow down a little bit. <laughs> and they're looking at you like you've lost your mind. They should join the congregation, <laughs> they should, you know. They <laughs> Crank it up. Put the window down. Well, you know, we're not ashamed. Right. At all, right. you get to dance a little bit. Actually, right. if you have joined us on a Sunday, you probably have seen oh, uh, a boogie or two. Yes, and I'm not talking about boogers. I'm no. talking about people moving and shaking with the spirit. Yeah. Guess what? That's the thing. I love I love that about us, and that's what some people don't yeah. like about us. It's I love true. that that we took the liberty that Jesus gave us yeah. and gives us daily, daily, yeah. and we apply it to every area of our life. And so if we feel his presence moving. We're going to respond yeah. in a way that is sometimes unaccustomed to in most church circles. But yeah. the way we feel is we sing, we dance. If David sang and danced, he was undignified and even yeah. said so as much. Why are we any better? Are we better than David? Man, and he was a man you know, after God's own heart. What was really exciting to me was to see all the young people and kids up there on Sunday and morning and to excellent. think just for a minute that my kids could have the potential of growing up with that kind of confidence in life. I mean, even even as well as the power of the Holy Spirit, but that kind of confidence and freedom to be able to move as they see fit. It's amazing. It was a powerful Sunday. Yeah, it was really, really awesome. Good times. And I uh, can't wait to. And I think we've talked about uh, making... Um, the kids be a more consistent part yeah. of our of our church service, at least on Sunday mornings. Yeah. Um, because when they got in there, man, it, it it just it took it up a notch. It was pretty awesome. It was yeah, incredible. It really was. So pretty pretty excited about uh, the content for this week. Obviously, it's round two of what is the gospel, and we are absolutely just floored by the ability to do not only these podcasts, but these series that God gives us. Um, it's a challenge for a lot of us because we're having to quantify things that we may have not quantified um, in the past. Yeah. And it allows us to have fresh perspective. And I think the perspective that you gave on Sunday was fantastic. And I'm, I'm actually really hoping that um, we'll have a, a greater just, I guess culmination of ideas and, and yeah. conversations yeah. during this podcast. I mean, there is no time frame on this, but I know, right? Um, I just I I, I want to prompt you with something, and I want to go ahead and read the. You had two scriptures, but I, I love the book of Hebrews. I love Philippians. I love Acts. I love Hebrew. I love. I really love all the Bible, but when it comes down to stuff, I find myself going into more often than not. It's Acts. It's Hebrews. Yeah. Those are, and, and, you know, I love those books and Philippians are just absolutely, they, it floors me every single time. Philippians two, mm. by far my favorite passage of the entire Bible. Anyway, we'll start it off. It says, and I'm reading out of the ESV version, not exactly sure mm. which year this is. It could be 2016 for all I know. It says, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for the conviction of things not seen. <laughs> I can, I'm going to go to read verse two for yeah. by it, the people of old received their commendation. Number verse three, by faith, we understand that the universe was created by the word of God 
so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. And not only created, but still being created. The universe is still expanding. All of God's words are still expanding. That's what blows my mind. And to imagine that I can participate in faith with him, I can actually partner with God by my faith, believing the things that I'm hoping for are already evident. Amen. That's what blows my mind. He is the only, God is the only being that is able to speak and it continues. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There is no end. Yeah. My voice will pass away. Correct. But his voice will never fail. Yeah. And it will never pass away. And I think what you, you get into a little bit of that on, on, on Sunday, you got into that and you were really talking very much about, obviously we're talking about the scriptures, the good news. We're talking about Jesus. We're talking about the ability for us to overcome just almost anything by faith in Christ Jesus. So one of the things that I, I'm, I'm looking at it right here in some of the notes that I'm pulling up, not only did you say Jesus will make us victorious, I think even like the one right underneath this, I think people need to understand this. And I think people need to get it down in deep into their hearts. It says, how can we be afraid of anything the devil may do? That was a question. Jesus is more powerful than him. Yeah. You know, and, and another thing, he is. He is. And one of the exciting parts of that understanding from my perspective um, is that in the exploration of the Word of God and our life in it. The gospel, you know, we say, well, what is the gospel? What is good news? What's good news to Michael? What's good news to Jared? Uh, That good news is that partnering with God, we are an unstoppable force. It's God, who can come against him? I mean, half of the Psalms are written in exploration of the reality that we can't fail. And when we when we look at everything from that perspective, you know, I, another thing I realize also is a, a lot of our listeners may not understand the fivefold ministry and how it plays into the gospel, the good news, um, and, and that good news as it comes to us in the scripture shows us that there is an office of a, an apostle, an office of a prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. We were talking about that momentarily, actually, Jared, just before we came on this broadcast, mm-hmm. and that reality being that all those different perspectives, you know, you were sharing about we're in a series, and this is round two of that series that I had the honor of bringing, and it's a little different perspective, a little prophetic perspective of that power that we have in Christ, uh, every time we align with his word, my word's going to pass away, your word's going to pass away. But when we speak his word, it just keeps echoing, echoing into the yep. future. And Multiplies, becoming absolutely. another voice and another voice. It says, heaven and earth will pass away before one jot or tittle will ever pass away from the word of God. Right. So I... I know for a fact, obviously, in John 1, 1, it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. So it's something that continues to permeate the atmospheres of everybody's lives. And the thing is, is I've always kind of seen it this way. It is a affiliation switch. And I kind of mentioned that last week with uh, Kara when we did our podcast, mm. um, that really it's just, you're flipping the switch. You You are now, once you have acknowledged and you're living in by faith, you are walking in the footsteps of righteousness right. or the path of righteousness, as some translations will put. Right, right. You are changing your affiliation from a godless existence to a I acknowledge or a God acknowledged existence. And you're allowing yourself mm. to be brought in under the yoke of Christ right. in a way that you, where you were saying, nope, I got this. Now you got me. It's a completely different mentality and a different connotation to it. And the enemy wants us to flip that switch back to where we <laughs> yeah, are a, yeah. a godless. We are not acknowledging him. His preeminence. Yeah. Yep. And, but 
God wants us to stay in the flow, and we can only do that through the good news, through Jesus. You know, when I was speaking, I was caught up in this period. You just reminded me of something I actually said during that message that is that very point, and that is that I saw you camped out on the side of the road, and there's so many people right now. You might be listening right now, and and I can see you camped on the side of the road because you thought you heard from God, and you stepped out into something, and you wanted to go from one to nine you really quickly, you wanted to go from uh, 10, you want to go from 10 miles an hour to a hundred miles an hour really quickly. And then you got out into it and, and things didn't go the way you planned. And you, and you pulled, you slowly pulled your vehicle over to the side of the road because you thought, well, you know, the enemy got at him, Jared, the enemy got at him, what you were just saying and pulled him, pulled you over, literally pulled you over. And you got out of the vehicle, and it wasn't going as planned. You you didn't get as fast as you thought. Uh, you were only going ten miles an hour. You and you sat down on the side of the road. You pitched a tent, and I saw you there. A- and you crawled into and you just started to camp. But you know what? You did hear from the Lord. You did hear from God. You needed somebody like me or Jared or or another gifting in the ministry to say, "Hey, listen. You heard from God. Uh, it just." You have to be prepared to walk it out before you step out. And I, I tell people all the time, Jared, that um, in that walking out and then that stepping out, you've got to decide first to be a finisher. Anybody can be a starter, but are you a finisher? And the good news is we don't finish alone. No, none of us do. <laughs> That's the good news. That is the good news. That's great. True. We can, we're all starters, but we really need to figure out whether or not we're going to also finish. He is the author and perfecter of our faith. And I think a lot of people think that if there, there's so much that is up to him, but he's, he had the hardest part and we get to reap all the benefits from it. Yeah. He had the hardest part. Yeah. Here's the benefits. Here's, here's in uh, Romans chapter eight. Verses 9 through 11, you, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit. That's that benefit that you're talking about, Jared. If indeed the Spirit of God lives in you, see, we never finish alone. Right. We haven't even started alone. (laughs) We do. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. I guess that's the most important question today. That's the start of this whole thing. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness, that partnering Amen. and righteousness. And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his Spirit who lives in you. What I love about Paul in this particular passage is he's talking to the obviously Romans who understand. Mm-hmm. Authority. Right. We recognize the authority of Christ. We recognize it. Yeah. And we submit ourselves to it. And because of our willing submission to it, he says, I can trust you. Here is my spirit. And how can we fail? We can't fail. (laughs) No. The same spirit that lives in us. Raise Christ from the dead. And it, it, it birthed the universe and created everything that we see and every sound that we hear every single time a baby cries, that is evidence of God's wow, yeah. creation. Yeah. Every single time you see something pass away, it is evidence of God's creation from life to death and yeah. everywhere in between it is evidence of God's anointing, his power, his presence. I think we don't really see it in those those ways. We mm. we we some of us, I would say some of us are able to recognize the presence and the power and the anointing of God in everything. And if we all stop and think like I'm looking at this TV screen right beside you, it, someone had a thought. Yeah that God put in their head that they may have not attributed to him. Right. But it was still the power of creation that was moving on. One thing I like to say is we are created by a creative God. 
and his creation still lives within That's us. That's good news. <laughs> and we have an ability to be creative. Yes. There are some things that R.C. Sproul talks about in systematic theology that I 100% love, and it's particularly this particular set of things. It's called the communicable attributes of God. There are things that we are able to have within ourselves because of our relationship with God. He attributes those same attributes Mm. to us. And I mean, I could probably do a really quick web search on the communicable attributes of God because it's something that shaped my faith. Wow. And it's, it's something so beautiful. I mean, uh, I, I wish I had had this brought up beforehand. Yeah. You know what? And sometimes it's, it's the understanding of these things that's really important. Even the understanding, like when you're using... Even words like anointing, I mean, what does that mean? What is the anointing? The specific power of God for a specific purpose, that creative purpose that you're talking about, that baby's cry Mm -hmm. that you're talking about. I have a lot of babies, so I can really relate to that. (laughs) So so, uh, that that specific power unleashed in us, an unstoppable force driving forward, that spiritual warfare that we talk about, and that these all come by understanding. And so what did you find? Um, well, I mean, the communi- the incommunicable, there was two parts of this particular teaching that I, I listened to almost 20 some odd years ago. Uh, it's from a ministry called Ligonier, R.C. Sproul, um, Systematic Theology. Mm. Um, it's, it's a, it's a, this is a really good teaching. So you yeah. kind of understand there's things that are God only and things that God passed on. Um, not passed on like he didn't want them, passed on to us, his right. children. So there's the incommunicable attributes that are like the omni attributes, like, you know, omnipresent, omniscient, yes. you know, all knowing, all wise, all powerful, all present in both time and space. Uh, Yahweh's attributes, self existent, beyond creation, eternally existent, beyond time, self sufficient, beyond need. God is infinite, immeasurable, incomprehensible, immutable, and sovereign, unlimited, unrestricted, boundless, absolute, supreme. That and covers a lot of ground. That covers a lot of ground. <laughs> Those are just the incommunicable yes. attributes. Yes. And really the things that are, and the way we think about this is the communicable attributes of God are the moral attributes that he gives us in the law. Yeah. So the communicable attributes are those attributes God shares with us. Um, way of saying it is that these are the attributes we have in common with God. So we can be faithful. Yes. We can be loyal. Yes. We can be trustworthy. Yes. We can be honest. Right. We can be uh, loving. We can be compassionate. So love, True joy, that. peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control, yes. the gifts of the spirit. So really, I look at it this way. The communicable attributes of God are the gifts of the spirit. Yeah. And those are the, our inheritance because of our affiliation and our switch from our godless selves to our God acknowledged and through Christ. Right. And so when we start using those things, our identity becomes so solidly, solidly on a foundation of permanence because God is immutable. He's incomprehensible. He's immeasurable. He's unlimited. He is sovereign. He's unrestricted. He's boundless. Mm. Those are foundations that when you place your faith on that foundation, right. You know it is not going to shift. It right. ain't going and to change. That's the gospel. <laughs> that is the gospel. And so oh, going back into this, it says the enemy wants us to forget to whom we belong. Yeah. So he wants to break that foundation in every single sense of the word. True. He wants us to question whether or not he's immutable, whether he is sovereign, whether he is unlimited in power, right? whether he is boundless. And so every single time there's a conflict of faith, I think it's because the enemy is trying us to for trying to get us to forget the right. foundation, but he can't. He, he can't, can't win because this is why God gave us the fivefold ministry. There you go for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, edifying the body of Christ till we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So he can't win. We have a sevenfold purpose of a fivefold ministry. Take that. Boom. What you going to do about that? <laughs> Not much. Doesn't, and, and, and this is what I, you know, said last week, and I'll say it again because it bears repeating. 
once you become affiliated in love by faith in Christ Jesus, your life doesn't become easier. Right. It doesn't. It doesn't mean that your bank account's going to get filled. It no. doesn't mean that your fridge gets filled with food. No. Um, it, 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 we actually suffer. We're going to go in through some, trials. In some cases, more. So the question that I have had in the past, a lot of people say, well, if it's not any better, if you if you're a Christian, why be a Christian? <laughs> if it's no better, why, what's the point? And my point is, I'm not living for the world today. I'm living for an eternity of tomorrow. Right. So in the meantime, we do have the family of faith to help us as well. Yes. You know, and I had a conversation. There was a lady that I've ministered to off and on for at least a year uh, and every time we would talk, I'd say, hey, sis, you know, find a family of faith. Some of our struggles would be easier, Jared, a little bit easier mm -hmm. if we were surrounded with people that we knew cared, you know, a church body, uh, a congregation, somebody, now a real one, no, one that's filled with faith and purpose, one that's filled with real love. Um, what does that Shana Kara say all the time? Act authentic, real, and transparent people around us. Yep a family of faith helping us. And I told this sister over and over, I said, you need to find something. I don't care where you just find somewhere to go. I'm not saying come to my church, find a family of faith that you know loves you. And it'll be easier, a little easier for you to get through these things, knowing you can reach out and get help. And the time came just last week when, when she reached out to me, but I was already in ministry mode with somebody else and I couldn't right. help her. And I warned her that day would come. It was an emergency. And the only thing I could say to her was, you know, I'm so sorry this is happening to you. And and I felt bad for her because she didn't have that. She didn't have that support around her. She, she didn't, didn't have, have the that. family. No. It breaks my heart. The gospel of Christ is best yeah. lived out in a community. Yeah. The good news is you can plug in somewhere right now. Absolutely. If you're listening to this podcast, you can find yourself a, f a family of faith nearby. This is the United States of America. There's one near you. <laughs> I guarantee it. <laughs> That's the truth. This is not 98% Muslim territory. Right. You're going to have to reach out online to find another believer. <laughs> it ain't the Bible Belt, but it ain't that far from it no, to where there's not, not a lot of not. churches and around. And that's good news. And that is good news. And that's something you can count on. And we're really serious about family. We're really serious about living a life uh, for Christ the other six days of the week. And I was having a conversation with my son. <laughs> It was a couple of days ago, as a matter of yeah, fact. Yeah, there's six days ago, like that. <laughs> the there was a there was a comment that he made. He said, "You know, you shouldn't do that on the church property." Uh, you know, mm. and I looked at him. I said, <laughs> "You shouldn't do that." And it doesn't matter what that is. You can insert a blank there if you would like. Yeah, you shouldn't really do that any of the other six days of the week either. <laughs> said so because really when you come to church whatever day that might be that you worship on if it's a saturday cool if it's a sunday cool if it's a monday tuesday it doesn't matter this what is day thursday of the week. right right it's thursday right <laughs> it, it, you're there to worship god the fellowship is just the icing on the cake but yeah. the substance the the biggest the meat of it is you're there to worship the father in the assembly of the saints yeah. with the other people they're doing the same thing the fellowship the coffee, the muffins, the, any of that, the kids' services, um, just, you know, whatever it is, youth services, babies, that's all extra yeah, icing stuff. Yeah, on the cake. Yeah. Okay, it's just extra stuff that we do yeah. for them, right? Yeah, right. We do it because we know, hey, God would be honored by that, so it's separate ministries. So it's their own opportunities for church as well. But we're here to worship the Lord. We're not here to do anything else. The other six days of the week, you got to live out your walk. What's the point of coming to church on a Sunday, Saturday, whatever it may be, yeah. and living godless the other six days of the week? Your faith is worthless. And so I had yeah. that was able to have that conversation with my Man, son. God help us move through our methods and our systems yeah, and, to experience real spirit life. Yeah, and, and so I'm oh. like, I'm sitting there going, it was a conviction of myself because I'm sitting there going, I looked at him, I said, son, I've been stuck in that mode. I've yeah. been stuck in that mode that I did not get the right 
good news. Yeah. I got condemnation. I got shame and I got fear oh, yeah. tactics I think we've all had shoved down my sure, throat. Sure. And I said, I'm not shoving condemnation, fear or shame down your throat. I want you to understand there's a better way. Yeah. There is a better way, people. There really is. And you know, in the times that we're living in right now, we have to look around and realize that that better way is for our protection as well. Amen. Extrapolate on that a little bit more. Well, you know, I, I just know that we're living in a moment where things are really being separated of sheeps, goats, wolves. We're all being separated. It's not a red or blue state thing anymore. We're all being separated. There's, there's a critical moment that's coming where you, the listener on the other side of this microphone, you'll, there's a separating coming and there, there will come the, the Holy Spirit inside of us, the Spirit of God living in us, recognizes the Spirit in someone else. And because we are one Spirit, one we are unified in the faith. And there will come a moment where you will either be recognized or not recognized. So I'm challenging everyone that I'm talking to right now. I'm challenging you that if you're able to fight spiritually, if you're able to fight, if you're capable of fighting for what belongs to you or ground you know needs to be taken in Jesus' name, if you're able to fight, you need to fight. You need to fight with whatever you have available. If you fight through praise and worship, if that's the weapon of your warfare, fight. If you fight through prayer and intercession, fight. If you fight through fasting, fight that good fight of faith. If you fight through anointing, then grab your anointing oil and anoint something. Because if you don't fight right now, we're coming into a season where if you don't fight, if you don't take that ground or protect what belongs to you in spiritual warfare, then you're just making yourself something that somebody else has to fight for. You're making yourself something that someone else has to protect. That's the bottom line. But the good news is that if you will fight, you will win. We will win together. Amen. 100%. We'll win. Yeah. That's the good news. Jesus can make us more alive tomorrow than we are today. Right. We That's are alive now, for. but we're looking forward to the transformation of what tomorrow looks like. Yeah. Right. I love that. God is good. He is. Jesus is absolutely amazing. The more and more I've poured into, and I, I love this series for if there's no other point that I can get out or, or fact or glean anything from it, it's the fact that I've been pouring over the Gospels again. And mm. even when I was sitting in worship today, we have a, as you know, we have a something we call Sunrise Sessions on Thursdays. It yeah. starts at 6 a.m. Yeah, drop and, in. Yeah, you should drop in. It's amazing. Yeah. Sometimes it'll just be mostly worship. Sometimes there'll be a, a teaching in there that uh, we feel like the Lord is highlighting. But in this particular case, it was during a um, a teaching from a guy named Corey Russell. He was yes. ta- te- teaching about oil. That was really good. It was very good. But I was sitting there and I was reading um, in Matthew and Luke and just all the miracles and, the, and the, just what he was stating in those moments and it started coming. I started tearing up because I'm like, man, I, I was thinking to myself back in the day that Jesus walked the earth, the first time he had set foot on the earth as a mortal man. Yeah. With the power of the Godhead completely in him. He is the fully yeah, God, wow. fully man. And he is sitting there man. and he is saying, the reason why they cannot understand is because they do not have ears to hear or eyes to see. Oh, and I sat so there good. and I go, Jesus, yeah. may I always have ears to hear yeah. and eyes to yeah. see. That's it. See, and that's the humility. That's the humility that this move of God is being carried on the back of right there. The, the days of lights, camera, action, the proud leaders, those days are over. 
and the servant leaders are rising. The, this movement is coming in on the back of humility. And we'll win. And we all have a job to do. Yeah, we do. And how we do that is incredibly important. We put people over processes. We put Jesus over everything, though. It doesn't matter what it is. I mean, if the Lord told me tomorrow to stop worshiping him with a keyboard and just lay down on the floor, I'd know for a fact that that would bring the presence of God more powerfully just in my obedience than it would be in my sacrifice. Exactly, Because it says obedience is better than sacrifice. True. So I am... I'm right there with all the other people that are stepping out and listening to what God is saying and what Jesus is leading them to do. (sighs) Wow. Wow, Jared, that's that's so much to take in. The gospels, the reality of that, the fullness of the Godhead dwelling in him bodily. Philippians 2. Yeah. (laughs) That's one of my favorite verses. Man. My favorite passages of all time. And that is really good stuff. And that is good news, that we have a Savior. We have the one God that's willing to carry us. I've seen, when I was back in Bible college, I saw studies of all the different gods around the world and the people carrying those idols down the street and realizing that I serve a God that will carry me. I don't have to carry my God. (laughs) And I was like, wow, (laughs) wow. He carries me into victory. And he's already won the fight. Yeah. We don't have to fight. No. It's beautiful. So how do we get people to not fight? Hmm. That's a good question. I haven't been able to figure that one out myself doesn't matter how much good news you can bring to somebody. It seems that there's just some people that want to fight it out. Well, maybe this could provide an answer. I found a scripture that really, uh, really ministered to me concerning this fight. And I can, I can say that fighting spiritually is not the same as fighting carnally. And it's in Galatians 5.13. It says, beloved ones, God has called us to live a life of freedom. I guess that would be freedom of the fight, huh? The spiritual fight's different. It says, um, God's called us to live a life of freedom, but don't view this wonderful freedom as an excuse to set up a base of operations in the natural realm. That would be that base of operations to fight in the natural realm, right, Jared? Yep. Constantly love each other, and be committed to serve one another. What version is that? Is that NLT? That's the passion. Passion version. Yeah. The ESV version says something slightly different. It says, for you are called to freedom, brothers. That part's very similar. Yeah. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. Right. But through love, serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Boom. Boom. So... I think we just need to teach love. And I think that's the culmination. What does it say? You know, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. Yeah. You know, Jesus came down in love. He lived his life through love. He is love. He is the only person we have ever known and will continue to ever know that is able to operate in agape. Mm. And he got up on a cross and rose from the grave all for love. Mm. You you could say what you want. You have to love the creation so much to go through that type of hell for the lost. Because what in the world does a well person need with the physician? Ah. God came down as a man in the form of Jesus to give life to those that needed a physician that were sick and that were dying. And that really is all of us. Wow. Every single one of us. For sure. Man. Hmm. Man. Thank you again. I'm honored. I can't wait for uh, the next time I get to see you sit in that chair. And And thank you guys for tuning in and hearing this podcast. I hope you've been enriched, empowered. Yeah, God is good. And hopefully if you were that person on the other side of the the listening uh, device, whatever you're listening on, on iPod, uh, Mac, 
just a computer in general, <laughs> if you're listening to this in your car and there was a word or something that sparked something in you, uh, feel free to send us an email. We would love to hear from you. Podcast at the barn.church. We feedback try to, is definitely appreciated. We definitely, yeah. definitely want feedback because we're really about improvement here. And we, we know that, you know, improvement is really uh, a way of the kingdom. Uh, <laughs> I mean, Jesus could have set the whole world on fire, but he decided to use some pretty gnarly guys. And (laughs) through the power of his presence, he improved them and they changed the world and the foundation of what we know Mm. as Christianity today. Right. So send us an email podcast at the barn dot church. You can always visit us um, in St. Joe, Michigan at 4032 and 139. Our service times are 1030 a.m. And we are going to be doing a youth service at 6 p.m. Obviously, it's for our youth. So if you are uh, from fifth grade to 12th grade, we would love for you to join us. Yeah. And stay tuned uh, for some other announcements later on in maybe next podcast. We'll have an idea. But uh, the return of Friday Night Light. Remarkable stuff. It's God is moving. (laughs) And I can only tell you that. Uh, being a part of the ministry from almost its inception, um, wow. it feels something like new is happening every single day, and I love it. It's never boring. <laughs> well, there's, there's going to be something new with hundreds in our circle of influence like it is now. It's amazing to see God moving like this. Yep. And praise God. Well, thank you, sir. Um, guys, we'll see you again next week. Be blessed. Bye-bye. moving and desires to move in your life too we know listening to this podcast is one of many ways he can work in your life the barn church and ministries exists to create environments where people encounter christ and are empowered to advance the kingdom check us out on the web at the barn.church follow us on facebook instagram and youtube at the barn ministries listen to this podcast on amazon apple google iHeartRadio, Spotify, and Spreaker podcast platforms. A new podcast is posted every Friday. If you would like to reach us, send an email to podcast at thebarn.church and visit us at the Barn Church in St. Joe, Michigan service times are Sundays at 1030 and 6 p.m.